and welcome back. So today we are going to talk about recognizing your weight loss progress, recognizing the weight you're losing, recognizing um, gratitudes or sprouts or progress or whatever you want to call it. At the end of the day, this is so supremely important when it comes to your weight loss journey. Like huge, 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 huge. There's, there's a lot of things that I can look back on through losing uh, 161 pounds in 13 months and say, yeah, that was important. Yes, that was important. That was, you know, and there was a lot of things that changed for me to go from failing to succeeding. But without a shadow of a doubt, this thing that I'm, we're going to talk about today is by far one of the hugest things. Um, I know that I would not have had the same success without this. And so, so often, um, you know, we, we always, we've heard things about recognizing, sorry, my hair's driving me nuts, um, recognizing your sprouts, recognizing um, your wins, celebrating your wins, celeb having gratitude for where you're at and where, where you've come from and all of that. And this is, but here, let me just say that <laughs> there's a fundamental flaw with the way most of us do this. There's a huge mistake that most of us make when it comes to this. And I only know this because I did it for like a decade. And I just thought I was the only one. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I must have been the only one doing this. But when I started working with other women, and I'm not talking about one or two. I'm talking about working and talking with thousands of women from not just here in the US, but from abroad, that, oh my goodness, I was not the only one. This is like an epidemic, and most of us do this. <laughs> so I'm gonna bet that I, I know that I'm not alone anymore, but I'm gonna bet that if you are watching this at some point, you have done this, you have made this mistake too. So, so often, most of us are like, yeah, it's really important to celebrate your wins. Yeah, it's really important to celebrate your successes. Yeah, it's really important to celebrate the progress. However, what most of us tend to want to celebrate is big milestones, reaching our goals. When I lose those 10 pounds, when I lose the first 10 pounds, when I lose the last 10 pounds, when I go from a size 16 and I get to a 14 or a 12 or a 10, or when I get down to that size eight, or when I get under 200 pounds and I get into Wonderland, we have these milestones that we set to celebrate. Unfortunately, most of us, I can raise both hands and both feet on this one. Most of us quit before we ever reach the milestones. Okay, and here's why. Because none of us are perfect. We are like flawed human beings, right? And we live on planet Earth where nothing goes according to plan all the time. So we mess up, we get off track, we eat things we're not supposed to eat or that we said we wouldn't eat. We say we're gonna work out and we don't. We do a workout and then we find out how out of shape we are <laughs> and we end up beating ourselves up. We end up getting frustrated. We end up focusing on all the wrong things. So I want you to imagine, you know, like outside this year, we have grown, um, we have fruit trees, we have tomato plants, I have herbs, basil, oregano, dill, I have I have bell peppers, uh, all these different things that, I'm, that we're growing outside. I also have weeds that I have to go out and either spray Roundup on or pull them. So imagine if all of a sudden I just stopped watering my tomato plants, but I started watering the weeds. Because you can't grow you can't grow plants without weeds popping up in there. They're so annoying. No matter how much you try to keep them out, they're always popping up. So if I start watering the weeds, but I stop watering the fruit. I stop watering what I want and I'm only watering the annoying weeds that constantly are popping up. What's going to happen? You're like, well, duh, Carmen, your tomatoes are going to die and you're going to have a, a whole bunch of weeds. But this is what we do in our own life. Like, this is what we do. So we don't focus on the activity that gets us to the goal. We focus on the goal. 
and the goal becomes, hitting the goal becomes everything, and we never even stop to think, to contemplate, to evaluate, to recognize, to talk about the activity that actually gets us to the goal. So let me give you some examples because you might be going, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Because <laughs> this would have been me. I would have been like, what? What are you talking about? Tomatoes and fruit and weeds and whatever. All right. Sorry. This like rug thing is like, okay, there we go. I'm all comfy now. Um, so let's, let's talk about water, for instance. I'll give you an example. So all of us that have been around the weight loss block before have heard somebody tell us or we've read a meme or we saw a pictograph or whatever that talked about drink your water. Drink half your weight in water every single day. Well, like I had no idea how much water I was drinking when I started losing weight because I didn't track it. And so like I always, I always assumed I was drinking more than what I was. And so when I started tracking it, I can remember like the first day, like I was like, oh, I'm supposed to drink 150 fluid ounces of water and I drank like 70. I failed by more than 50%, like I drank less than 50% of what I was supposed to drink. So what most of us would do is we'd go, oh man, I suck. I was supposed to drink 150 fluid ounces. I only drank 70. Like, man, how am I ever going to drink 150 fluid ounces? Like, I struggled getting 70 down. Versus celebrating the fact that, oh my goodness, I didn't get to the 150, but I tracked it. Like, I tracked the water. I, for the first time in how long, know exactly how much I drank. And tomorrow, I'm going to do better. So we, 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 we fly right by the fact that we tracked it because that's annoying to have to actually track how much you're drinking and keep track of it and be diligent and responsible and keep track of something, right? So we forget about that pain in the butt of tracking and we just skip right to the fact that we didn't hit our goal. Let's just say you started working out. And no matter whether you were going to go to the gym or you were going to work out from home like I do. Listen, I have three kids. We have several businesses. And if me working out depended on me going to the gym, it would not happen. And if I did walk into a gym six and a half years ago, I wouldn't have known what to do. So thankfully, I started off with these at-home workouts where there's an expert that on, the, on the streaming platform. I can press play. And they will tell me exactly what to do. So inside of those 30 minutes, I can get a kick butt, calorie scorching, muscle building workout that's actually going to do something versus me just walking into a gym and being like, hmm, that machine looks good. Like we were just on vacation and uh, not that long ago and I, I go to the gym on vacation and work out. I take my phone in and I play my little workout and I do it right there in the gym. And it's so funny because I always see people that come into the gym while I'm working out and I'll watch them. They'll like do this for a couple minutes, do that for a couple minutes, do this for a couple minutes and they leave. And like that's probably what I used to look like. And I now that I know about fitness and I know about training and I know about rep ranges and you know cardio, heart rate and all that, like I'm always like they did nothing. Like they did something, but like, anyway, they would have been so much better just joining me um, in my little 30 minute workout. Anyway, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is let's just say you start working out and you're, you're out of shape because that's where I started. I started at 288 pounds. I started at morbidly obese. I started at, oh my gosh, I'm going to die after, you know, running in place for a couple minutes. Um, after our second baby, I was breastfeeding, which means my boobs were ginormous. I had to wear two sports bras just to hold them down. I was 288 pounds, which means when I jumped, everything jiggled. That makes you feel amazing and sexy. Um, but I just wasn't in shape. So working out, I can remember pressing play on that video for the first time and watching the expert on TV who was clearly in shape thinking, Carmen, Look at how far you have let yourself go. Look at how out of shape you are. You can't even do a girl push up. You can't even twist your body and stretch. You can't even touch your toes. And it was like this tape criticizing, reminding, looking at everything and pointing out everything I couldn't do. I didn't need somebody else to tell me I sucked because I am better at it than anybody else anyway. I can rip myself apart and condemn and criticize better than anybody else can. Um, but when you do that long enough, 
when you condemn, when you criticize, when you are constantly pointing out what you can't do. That is a recipe for quitting. That is a recipe for staying stuck. That is going outside and watering the weeds versus watering the tomato plants, watering the activity that's going to get you to where you want to go versus saying, you know what? This is where I'm starting, but it's not where I'm staying versus reminding myself that someday what I'm doing now is going to be my warm up. Versus reminding myself that, you know what? A bad workout is always better than no workout. <laughs> and prior to the bad workout, I had been doing no workouts. So the bad workout was way better than what I was previously doing, right? But like, isn't it funny when we get in the situations, we don't ever focus on that. We focus on the negative. We focus on what we're frustrated. We focus on what we can't do. And if you want to win this thing called weight loss, you cannot wait for the big milestones to celebrate because you won't make it. Most people quit before they ever make it to their goal. Most people quit long before they ever reach that milestone they were going to celebrate. And it's because they're watering the weeds. They're waiting to recognize the milestone versus recognizing all the activity that's going to get you there. The activity like setting two alarms on your phone so that you don't sleep through, press the snooze button and you don't sleep through your workout. The sprout of putting your phone on the other side of the room so that you actually have to get up out of bed. The sprout of laying your workout, laying your, your, your workout outfit out the night before or sleeping in it. I, when I first started, I was trying to give myself like no excuses. So I would actually put on my sports bra, my tank top and my workout pants. And I would sleep in them the first couple weeks when I was going to start to work out. Like I didn't want to leave any room. any room for me wiggling my way out of my workout. And that's what I had done in the past. Putting the water in my fridge, knowing that I need to drink 100 fluid ounces. So measuring it out and having it in the fridge and water bottles ready to go. Meal planning, grocery shopping, and buying healthy foods that I'm going to eat. Going in the break room and eating one cookie versus eating four cookies. Having a bite of the peanut butter instead of the whole jar. <laughs> doing the workout and celebrating the fact that I did it versus the fact that I couldn't keep up. Going to bed early so that I get sleep. I get my seven to nine hours a night versus pushing it, living under the mantra of I can sleep when I'm dead and only getting five to six hours burning the candle at both ends. The sprout of my kids worked out with me. The sprout of the gratitude of recognizing that as a mother, I get the chance to set an example of what persistence, commitment um, looks like versus just talking about it. Walking the walk versus just talking the talk. The fact that you're watching this video right now is a sprout because it means that you are actually making an investment of time into here to watch something that might move you closer to your goal that you're not just you know not that you're not that you're not thinking you can do it on your own without any inspiration or without any advice or without any tips all of us need to be inspired to our goal when you start looking for the things that you're, when you start looking for the activity that's going to get you closer to your goal, you'll find it. When you start looking for the things to celebrate, you'll start finding them. Recognizing the success activity, recognizing your sprouts, recognizing the little wins, that's a habit. It's a habit. And when you start doing it, when you start recognizing those small little things, when you recognize the fact that, yes, I haven't lost five pounds, but I haven't gained five pounds either. When you recognize the fact that you went to the grocery store 
and you didn't buy any of the junk you used to or you left the house and you didn't go through the drive through or you only had one glass of soda versus three. When you start doing that and you start watering that activity, you will start getting more of that activity. The more you water it, the more you'll get versus what most of us do, which is we are starving all the success activity and we are watering all the bad stuff. And then we wonder why we keep repeating the bad stuff and we're not doing what we are supposed to do. But we keep doing all this bad stuff because what you focus on flourishes and what you starve will die. So stop focusing on the areas you're messing up. Stop focusing on the I don't want us. Stop focusing on the I don't like carrots. Stop focusing on the I'm not in shape. Stop focusing on the I don't have time. Stop focusing on, oh my gosh, I did leg day yesterday and I can barely walk. Stop focusing on all the areas where you did not live up to your your standard of perfection or you comparing your beginning of the journey to someone else's middle or end. And just start being a start being a freaking crazy person for recognizing being your own cheerleader and recognizing all the areas where you are knocking it out of the park, all the areas that you are showing up, all the areas that you are trying regardless of it's, if it's perfect or not, regardless of if you're doing as good as that girl you follow over on Instagram, regardless of whether you lost one pound, five pounds, or none the first week. Because even if you lost none, you didn't gain. You stopped the habit of gaining, which in order to lose, you have to stop gaining. <laughs> So that's a win. I didn't gain, I didn't lose, but I didn't gain anything. Yes. And I'm telling you, this right here is a game changer when it comes to weight loss. This right here is like, it will, I don't care how long you've been failing. This will take you from failing to succeeding if you just start doing this. And I'm not saying it's going to change overnight because most of us have a habit of focusing on the negative. But as you start focusing on the positive, as you start celebrating the small things, as you start focusing on your wins, you will start to do it more. And then when you start to focus on the negative thing, you will actually recognize that too. Hey, wait a minute. I'm focusing on the negative instead of the positive. I'm watering the weeds instead of the fruit. I'm watering the weeds instead of the vegetables. I'm watering the weeds instead of what I want. So anyway, um, yeah, I hope you do it. I hope you, I hope you just didn't watch this video and go, Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I like your lipstick, Carmen, <laughs> but hopefully you will get off here and start doing some of these things. Hopefully you will look back at your day and say, wow, what are some of my wins for today? Shoot, I just watched that chick's video and listened to her yell at me and play with her hair and whatever. <laughs> so, all right. Thanks so much for watching. Check out some of the other videos. Um, if we, not that long ago, made a really healthy, protein-packed Oreo blizzard. I will put the description just because, I don't know, I just, I feel like, you know, you need it in your life. I need it in my life and I make it, but you need it in your life. So I will link that down below. So if you have not seen the protein packed low calorie Oreo blizzard recipe that actually tastes delicious, I'll post it down below. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.